Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Hive 2. This is video 10, and today we're talking about LFOs. So Hive has two LFOs, one on the left-hand side and the second one on the right-hand side. Both are going to be the same, but for this video, let's just concentrate on the first one here. So let's go to a new preset, and you will notice that by default, this shape is going to be a triangle, as we can tell by this shape here, and it says triangle right here on the list. So if we click this triangle, we have options of sign, triangle, saw up, saw down, square high, low, square low, high, random hold, and random glide. And if we click these, the picture here is going to change depending on what we have. So we have a basic sine wave, triangle wave, saw going upwards, and then we have saw going downwards. Then we have square high, low, where it starts in the positive territory for half of its cycle and then negative for the rest of its cycle. And then we have square low, high, which is the inverse of that. Then we have random hold, so a random LFO that has stepped values. And then we have random glide, which is basically still random. It's just not going to be stepped. It's going to be a little bit smoother in case you want to do something with that. So moving on from here, we should talk about this polarity because this is going to play an important role. So as we know, LFOs are positive and negative, right? There's this horizontal line, and this is going to be zero. When it crosses this upwards here, it's going to be in positive territory. Anywhere below that, it's going to be in negative territory. So let's say we put this modulation on pitch. So let's do this right now here. Let's put it on the pitch and give it some depth here. So we can tell that it's going higher pitch than the note that we're playing and lower than, we're, than what we're playing. So let's say we only want this to modulate upwards in pitch, then this is gonna be a case where we wanna select polarity. So now it's only going to go into positive values or positive territory. So definitely a very useful switch right over here. So let's go back to a new preset and talk about this phase here. So depending on how you restart the envelope or the LFO, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment, this phase now basically determines where in this LFO cycle are we going to start. So it's kind of nice as we turn this, we can see this graph kind of see exactly where it's going to be at 50% right over here. It's going to be right at this apex of the triangle. So once we start using this, it's going to start going downwards. And if we only went in positive, we can just do that. And then it's going to go just downwards from here very useful so next up is going to be the rate so one of the coolest knobs for this lfo and i like how yuhi does this in a lot of their synths so let's say for example we go to one second's time so basically this lfo is going to be modulated at one second let's drag this to the pitch here and give it some depth and change the sawtooth to a sine wave so it's modulating this pitch here every second right every second this cycle of this lfo completes so let's say, for example, we want to half the speed and have this two seconds instead of one second. And we click our list here and we see, oh, we only have 0.1, we have one second, and we have 10 seconds. That's all the choices that we have. So that's why this rate knob here is included to kind of offset the times. So if we turn this all the way to the right, we have five. All the way to the left, we have negative five. So basically, we have 10 integer values if we want to stay with integers. So how does this work? So if we double click this back to zero, it's going to be at one second. So if we want to maybe double the speed or half the speed, let's say for this example, we want to make this slower, right? So we have one second right here. So the main thing that you need to know is with this rate knob, if you go with integer values, so like negative one, that's going to half the speed. If you go to positive one, that's going to double the speed and so on and so forth. So if we want to go from one second to two seconds, we select one second and then we bring this rate to negative one. which is going to make it two seconds and then double click to zero. It's back at one. So a very, very helpful knob right over there, because we look here and we see, oh, we only have three of these time things and, you know, a lot of the stuff for BPM. But it's a really cool way to really dial in a very certain speed without having a list that's like one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. It would just really clutter things up. So this rate knob is very helpful for that. So hopefully you understand that one. It's a very, very cool knob. So moving on from here, let's talk about the restart here. So if we go to a new preset, as we can see, this defaults on gate, but let's talk about sync for the first one because it's first on the list here. So basically the LFOs of all voices are synced to the host, but keep in mind, we can modulate the phases of these apart. If that's confusing, here's a quick little example. So let's go from sawtooth back to a sign and kind of do the same thing that we're doing before, right? Let's grab this cross here and go to the pitch here because it's kind of easy to hear that. It's a little bit fast, so let's maybe go to one over four, maybe one over two, something like that. Okay, so basically we have a note and we play another note and another note. There are lots of notes. The main takeaway is that all of these notes are following the same shape, right? It's kind of staying with the same phase. 
Now we can modulate these phases apart. So if we use something like key follow, so we're changing the phase here, right? So let's go to our matrix here. Let's right click where it says none. Let's go to our first LFO and then select phase. So we want to change this knob here. And what we can do is we can go to none and then we can select key follow and kind of give this a good amount of depth, right? Something kind of like that. So we can kind of move those key things apart. So as we hit a note here, and we had a note higher up, we can see now that the phases aren't going to be aligned anymore. So if you ever needed to do something like that, you can totally do that. So let's go back to a new preset here and talk about some of the other ones. The default one that comes here is going to be gate. So basically notes will restart the LFO for each voice independently as determined by the phase knob. Now this is important because if we do the same thing here with LFO onto the pitch and give it some modulation right here, we hit a note. Let's change this back to a sine wave and then slow this down to maybe one, one over two. And we hit another note randomly in the cycle. That next note is going to have its own independent LFO and they're not going to be sharing the same LFO. So things can get kind of chaotic over time. And yet some more. It just turns kind of crazy. Next up here on from gate, but then we have a single, which is actually kind of cool because I use this one pretty often and it's good to know that it's there if we ever need to use it. So basically all these voices that we play, different notes and all that are going to share the same LFO and it's gonna restart every time you let the keys go and then play the keys again. So we have a note here and let's randomly hit another note. See how it follows the LFO every single time? It's because all these voices are following the same LFO shape, which is really helpful if you're maybe doing some weird pitch stuff like this, or you might even find yourself in different situations where if you're on gate or something like that, you want the LFO to restart every note, but it's kind of irritating how different voices will have different LFOs. So in this case, single might be the speed for you to use because it's actually very, very helpful. And then the last one here is going to be random and pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. It just hits at a random phase inside the cycle of this shape here. But if we hold it, it's going to continue that shape, right? But every time we hit a note, there's no consistency. So it's basically a random LFO. And keep in mind, this is also for each voice independently as well. So kind of similar how gate functions, but it's just going to be random. So different notes will be independent LFOs that they're going to be assigned to, if that makes any sense here. So basically the last thing that we need to cover is the time base. So there's quite a lot here to choose from. And we have triplets, we have dotted, which is really nice here. Some pretty slow LFOs if we want to go eight over one. And keep in mind, this rate knob also works for these synced values as well. So if you want something even slower than eight over one, which is already pretty slow, you can select eight over one and then slow this down with the rate knob. And last thing to drive home really is integer values with this rate knob are going to either half the speed or double the speed, depending if you go negative or if you go positive. So yeah, that's basically the LFOs in a nutshell. They're not too complicated, but I definitely want you to remember that this rate knob is here and it's very useful and main, the main difference is between gate, single, and uh, and sync here, especially single here. If you want notes or voices to follow the same LFO, then go a single if you don't want that functionality. Maybe gate or something like that is more, uh, more your speed. So yeah, th that was the LFOs. Hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.